Good morning, students. In continuation with the lesson Australia, today we are going to learn about the physical features of Australia. So let us begin with the topics. In today's topic, we are going to focus on the Western Plateau and the Central Lowlands. The entire continent of Australia presents a low, flat topography and it does not have very high mountains like that of the Himalayas. The mean elevation of most of the entire continent is only about 300 meters above the sea level. Only 5% of the continent is more than 600 meters above the sea level. So here you can see on your screen the physical map of Australia. Now let us start with the Western Plateau. The western part of Australia is a plateau made up of very hard rocks. It includes the Western Territory, that is the Western, western Australia, parts of Northern Territory and a considerable part of South Australia. There are a few mountains that rise from the flat plateau. They include the Darling Range, the Hammersley Range, the Macdonnell Range, and the Musgrave Range. The most interesting part of this western plateau is the Ayers Rock, which is located over here. It is a single largest rock, which in local language is known as Uluru, which means a place where the wind moans between dawn and dusk. This single large rock is so big that a person will have to walk nearly 10 kilometers to go once around the, this huge rock. Much of the interior of Australia is a great desert. It includes the Great Sandy Desert, the Gibson Desert, the Victorian Desert or the Great Victoria Desert and the Great Australian Desert. The western part of Australia is a, an area which is very rich in mineral resources. Rare minerals like gold, zinc, copper are found in abundance over here. Cultivable land and livestock stations are located in the southern part of the plateau, which has a milder climate and is somewhat wetter than that of the northern part of Western Australia. Now let us learn about the Central Lowlands. The Central Lowland is a low-lying region between Western Australia or the Western Plateau and the Eastern Highlands, that is the Great Dividing Ridge. It extends from Gulf of Carpentaria in the north to Encounter Bay in the south.
the central lowlands can be divided into three smaller regions. They are the Great Artisan Basin, which mostly occupies parts of South Western Queensland, the Lake Eyre Basin, which is found in this particular region of South Australia, and the Murray Darling Basin which is found in the southeastern part of Australia. Now let us learn about these three important regions one by one. The Great Artisan Basin is the largest basin and it has got reserves of underground water. The Artisan Basin is a flatland where a layer of permeable rock is sandwiched between layers of impermeable rock. Here you can see how the rock which is light green in color is the porous or the permeable rock is found in between two impermeable rocks. Rainwater falling or snow melting is absorbed by this area. That is the porous rock absorbs the rainwater or melted snow and the water flows down and gets trapped between the two impermeable rock and acts like a huge reservoir which is known as an aquifer. Aquifer is a reservoir where water is accumulated. As water keeps its level, it gushes out of this area if a hole is drilled in the ground water table. The water also keeps flowing out of the well automatically like a fountain. So here you can see pictures where water is flowing automatically like a fountain from the artisan well. So hole need not be drilled but they are gushing out from the aquifer naturally. Next we come to the Lake Eyre Basin. So the Lake Eyre Basin is found in this region, that is part of the Northern Territory, a large area of Queensland and some parts of the Southern Territory of Australia. Now this is a very large area of inland drainage where rivers disappear without reaching the sea. Lake Eyre is a shallow saltwater lake and it covers a large area but it remains dry with a white salt pan on the surface. So here you can see how the Lake Eyre Basin actually looks like. All these white layer which you can see in the first photograph is actually the photograph of the salt pan which occurs due to very high evaporation of the water and leaves behind the white colored salts. 
spread on the entire surface. The Murray-Darling Basin derives its name from the Murray and its tributary. So here we have the Murray River, which is a perennial river, and the Darling River, which comes from the eastern or the Great Dividing Range and joins the Murray River. Both the rivers drain into the southern seas, that is the southern ocean over here. The river Urumbaji is also a very important tributary of the Murray Darling Basin. This basin is the most fertile part of Australia. So you can see over here the Darling River which originates from the Eastern Highlands is also being joined by several smaller rivers and so is the River Murray. So together they make a huge basin and the water drains into the southern ocean. This Murray Darling Basin is mostly found in New South Wales and parts of southern Queensland. You can see a few pictures of the Murray Darling Basin. So today we learnt two very important features of Australia, namely the Western Plateau and the Central Lowlands. We'll continue with the same in the next module. So that is what we have enough time for today. Thank you.